Good afternoon, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Wednesday. It is 1.53 p.m. here in California. September 10th, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here shows a 2.8 earthquake across the area of Turkey. Western Turkey area, it looks like. A little bit of swarming, well, not swarming, but uh, further movement going on east and west of the area. The majority of the clusterization there is from that six-pointer that struck uh, a number of weeks back. That's all aftershock activity. Uh, take a look here at the West Coast. Um, man, this activity over here across the Cascadia subduction zone uh, has pretty much come to a halt. Let's see if we got any earthquake activity today. Uh, look at this one right smack dab on the Cascadia fold and thrust belt. That one was from yesterday uh, for a 1.5. But man, we had a, a big swarm out here of uh, a bunch of decent sized earthquakes. The largest, of course, in this cluster is going to be to the 5.8 that uh, had a number of decent aftershocks in there as well across the Gorda, um, the western side here of the Gorda Plate. Now, there's technically three separate plates here. The Juan de Fuca, Gorda Plate, the smaller one, and the Explorer Plate way up north. This is a, along a spreading seafloor center. That's where uh, uh, the upwelling there from the mantle kind of pushes up separates this area and creates new oceanic crust that's why we have these ridges out here pointing in this general fashion to the southeast here this is where all the strain uh, normally uh, accumulates when we see activity out here this is the southern end of the cascadia subduction zone and we've been watching since that 5.8 struck a number of earthquakes back and forth here in between the southern end of the cascadia up here as well across the cascadia fold and thrust belt very dynamic area and also a very dangerous and very well strained uh, subduction zone. Now, of course, the Cascadia extends all the way up north there past the Queen Charlotte Sound area or within the Queen Charlotte Sound region, past Vancouver Island ranges. But um, this area down here across the southern end can see partial ruptures on occasion, right? And just a heads up here, let me show you guys uh, some... Uh, where'd it go? There's a couple different scenarios and whatnot here from this site called Surviving Cascadia. It's a very interesting page, and I'm trying to show you guys this uh, data down here. Now, this is very important because this goes back to the last 6,032 years of history. Our last one was back in 1700 in terms of full-scale rupture. Now, there's obviously uh, ruptures that occur of a partial nature at the southern end, which is, can be just you know pretty damaging up around the 8.3 or so magnitude uh, across the uh, northern California and southern Oregon, southern coast of Oregon, that is. Uh, so look at this data right here. When you put all the data into compilation, 93% of the time the Cascadia subduction zone fault has not had to wait 324 years for the strain to break it. We are at 325 years. Look at that percentage there. Uh, the longest time span between major Cascadia earthquakes in the last four millennia was only 291 years until our current time period. So we are, um, I, I think we're getting close. I'm, you know, kind of thinking that the southern end here is fairly well ripe for some big earthquake activity. It's showing out here. The signs are starting to show, and they have been. Uh, but as... Uh, as always, we could see a full rupture out here along the Cascadia. Uh, most of the signs and stress are along the southern end, but that, you know, it can happen in its entirety out here. So we do got to be prepared. The activity has come to a halt, though, surprisingly today. Uh, as I've noted, one earthquake, uh, let's see here. Actually, we've had two, three after midnight. One down here across the southern end of the Gorda Plate. 2.5 there and also a 1.4 towards the southern end of the Cascadia mega thrust region. Uh, nothing else in the area for now. Bay Area pretty quiet. Got one earthquake on the creeping section of the San Andreas Fault. That's a 2.8. Uh, southern California generally quiet for now. Uh, I don't really see anything of any major movement. Just a typical clustering of small microquake activity today and from yesterday got uh, 47 earthquakes here on the map uh, again a majority of these not going to be felt because of their small magnitudes up into the pacific northwest some further activity around mount st helens again um, this has been an area of interest uh, because this follows a big swarm a huge swarm 
that uh, struck up there in the Mount Rainier area over the last couple months. In fact, it started back there in early July. This is not all of the earthquakes there that are showing. Um, there's been uh, a lot, quite a bit. Uh, but since then, uh, since that's slowed down a little bit, we've noticed Mount St. Helens stir up here. Look at this. We got 83 earthquakes at Mount St. Helens in the last 30 days and kind of got a little uh, migration here. The newer activity in the orange, it seems like it started up here um, and then worked its way southwest, it looks like, there across the area of Mount St. Helens. Uh, so let's go see what we got there across the uh, seismograph station today as far as those earthquakes being reported. I'll go over here to the Mount St. Helens seismograph station first. And there's some of those earthquakes. You can see that linear fashion there or that migrational pattern. Here is the seismograph station here, recorded data. Looks like we're starting to pick back up here for sure. Uh, there is, how many are they reporting out here just today alone? They got six recorded earthquakes. The last one, a little point, little negative point two uh, at 8.10 in the morning. 8.10 in the morning is going to be this one right here. So... If that's a little negative quake, what about all these 20 or 30 other quakes that are on there? <laughs> How come those are not showing up on the graph? Literally, they stopped reporting the earthquakes at 8 o'clock this morning. And as you can see, if they're calling this an earthquake right here, what about that one? What about that one? What about all these other ones out here? What about the ones previous uh, last night and overnight here? Definitely looks like we've got a swarm stirring up there across Mount St. Helens. And that, of course, follows a swarm around Mount uh, Rainier. Let me go back here to Mount Rainier, click the wrong one. And we'll see what's going on here as well. I've noticed there has been some earthquake activity, but this is a volcano here where they've kind of uh, stopped reporting a lot of the smaller quakes. Every once in a while, they'll throw in a, a little 0.5 or something every couple days. But there's a legit earthquake right here. Looks like it's about 740 or so. That's that is a legit earthquake. So is that one. Let's see what these guys are showing up here. Uh, they got one earthquake up on the map. A little point six at 2 o'clock this morning. So 2 o'clock this morning. What time exactly? 2.06 local time there. So that would be... Uh, technically, that would probably be this little spike right here. <laughs> what about all these other spikes? There's bigger events than that one. You know, these two right here are well-defined earthquakes. These are distant earthquakes from the area, uh, away from the area. But, uh, yeah, there's a, no, there's a little bit of earthquake activity on that uh, seismograph station. They're not showing up across uh, the Mount Rainier area on the USGS map. So I do believe that is a sign here of the strain out here with the Cascadia. A lot of these inland earthquakes um, starting to show up here, just like that swarm down there in Nevada, swarm up in Utah. Uh, it may seem like a long distance for us, right, in terms of humans and the area. But if you look at the bigger scale of things, the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate are huge. Pacific Plate over here, North American Plate. So this little area along the Cascadia is just a little fraction of the, the uh, interaction out here between the North American and the Pacific Plate. And, of course, the Juan de Fuca Plate, the subducting plate there. Um, so it's... Even though it seems like a long ways away from the West Coast, it's only a little hop, skip, and a jump in terms of plate tectonic movement. Strain will show up across various areas of the North American plate, uh, like it's doing right now when things are quite com compressed and pressurized. So all those swarms out there in Nevada recently, uh, Utah, Idaho, up around uh, Yellowstone, bunch of earthquake activity through the Cascades. That's all a sign there of things getting um, possibly close. Uh, to see the Cascadia event out here. Uh, the one up around Yellowstone, there's a little trail leading off here. In fact, it's got a little trail feature here if we go to look back the last 30 days over here around Sawtooth Fault System in Idaho, stretching all the way up to Yellowstone. Um, let's go ahead and check out the Yellowstone uh, graph real quick, see what we have. See if there's any swarm stirring up that maybe we are not aware of. I do like to check the recorded graphs here on occasion. There's a couple earthquakes there. It looks like this morning, uh, 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock or so. Those are definitely legit local earthquakes. Um, USGS showing 
Yeah, this one over by Hebgen Lake. There's a point six. So it does look like they reported a couple of those quakes there around the three to four o'clock time period. A couple more this morning, it looks like. This event right here is um, it's about 11 o'clock this morning. Which one is that? Because that's a decent size signature. This one down here. That's what it is. 11 o'clock this morning, 3.2 and a 2.8. That's actually in a, a little interesting location, way south of Yellowstone. But, um, you know, when you start seeing elevated movement out here in, into the Intermountain West area, away from the plate boundary, that's a sign to watch the plate boundary, right? That's where all the stress builds up. We can get other fault systems up there, but when things are maximized, uh, that's the area to watch for big earthquake activity. Remember, remember, that's just a little bitty tiny fraction of land. Might might look giant to us, right? Try walking from Sacramento up to uh, Yellowstone. That'd be a, a nice little hike. It's a, 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 the drive itself is uh, fairly lengthy. So distance-wise for us humans, yeah, it seems like a long ways. But when it comes to plate tectonics, that's just a little fraction of the plates out there. So it's going to show uh, when things are very strained out there. And they're uh, definitely at that point right now. Oil field to Texas still quite uh, active out around Midland and Pecos, Texas. Oil fields rocking and rolling, normally a sign that the North American plate under quite a bit of strain. Uh, some moving outside of the OKC area as well. New Madrid seismic zone got one earthquake uh, from yesterday north of Memphis into the Jonesboro, Illinois area. But uh, quiet for now, but that region can see some big earthquakes. All right, a little bit of further activity over here across the Curl Kamchatka Trench this morning. Uh, got uh, a number of earthquakes in the full range and also the last two being rep uh, reported around a 5 and a 5.1. Um, things are, I think, are at a standstill here. May see some larger activity over here, or we may see some larger movement across the uh, west coast there. Uh, Japan, the Nankai Trough is an area to watch right here. Got some activity north and south of that region, putting a major uh, pressurization there on that northwestern corner of the Filipino plate. That's a Nankai Trough right here, and that's a... Uh, an area of concern for mega quake activity because of the amount of time that's passed and the uh, the fact that one of the segments there did not rupture in the last series of events back in 1942 and 44. Pretty good cluster going on there across the Indonesia area. Uh, New Zealand rocking and rolling with a bunch of threes for now. Nothing big going on. Quiet area, Papua New Guinea eastward. Uh, Middle America Trench here, pretty active, but uh, I don't see anything big showing up there. A couple earthquakes along the Peru Chile Trench as well. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Uh, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things here today and uh, see what happens. We do have a uh, fairly giant, massive coronal hole facing us, just about directly facing us here. So it'll be interesting to watch here from this point forward for the next couple days. See if we don't get some big events happening here in terms of bigger earthquake activity. Because there is. Uh, last time we had something like this, there was a, a decent uptick of large events. I think we had that uh, activity there in Russia and Alaska uh, when last time we had a, a decent uh, coronal hole that was facing us. Although that was a little bit more south of the equator, equator area of the sun down in this location. This one here, though, is center disk directly looking at us. And the magnetic lines here that shoot out from this coronal hole, a uh, high-speed solar wind stream, can play a part on uh, uh, some elevated earthquake activity, at least from what I can see here. Uh, but we'll watch this one. Uh, I say if we don't get any elevated activity with this directly facing us, then you know, then that's one for the books here that uh, this may not be a, a generating factor. All right. Uh, but that will stir up some high-speed solar wind stream here. Once the arrival in a number of days, uh, that should stir up the auroras from that coronal hole. Uh, not yet on the forecast, but uh, that, you know, like I say, it's getting, uh, it's looking directly at us there. No major auroras in the forecast. No large solar flares. Things are pretty quiet there across the solar flare department. Only a handful of sunspots out here, and they're uh, fairly stable or decaying even further. And as you can see. Nothing back out there across the eastern limb. Quick glance here at the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, not a whole lot of severe weather. There's a bunch of thunderstorm activity here. 
low pressure across Northern California. In fact, we could get some storms out here in Redding and Chico area where I live, north of Sacramento mainly. Um, little marginal risk there across uh, the darker green regions, mainly due to a little bit of wind and just a tiny bit of large hail potential. Uh, but uh, really nothing major going on for the severe weather department. Quick glance here at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. Ooh, that's a big one. Almost 500 foot building size asteroid. You definitely want to keep that far away. Uh, that's definitely safe. Over a million and a half miles away from the planet coming in September 11th. Uh, that's tomorrow. It's been uh, tracked since 2009. That's a, definitely a big asteroid there. Uh, a couple other bigger ones, newly discovered, uh, but those are all millions of miles away from the planet. So that is a good thing. Uh, seismograph stations out there, um, pretty quiet right now. There's a little spike on the Barrett station, but uh, for the most part, um, just a little quiet out here. But watch for the trimmer counts, the slow slip events. Uh, that'll come out later tonight. We'll cover that see if this is elevated but it's pretty much come to a halt as far as earthquake activity goes and the trimmer count so that means everything's locked uh no more shoving that plate down underneath the area we could be at a point here where it, where it uh, decides to pop uh, we'll definitely watch that folks and if you got some time this afternoon check out this site called survivingcascadia.com it's got a wealth of information out here when it comes to scenarios, estimated impacts in terms of tsunamis, uh, shaking intensity across the area, um, you name it. It's got uh, every everything. Uh, various examples there of um, the felt reports, uh, should it happen there across Salem. And uh, anyway, it got a lot of stuff here to look at. And it, it'll take you a long time to read all this, but it's well worth the knowledge and, and the uh, information here that's on this website survivingcascadia.com all right folks we'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this evening unless something major happens stay safe out there